to my channel because I'm crafty. My name's Caitlin, and today I'm going to talk to you about sewing machines. Uh, in the next few weeks, I'm going to be sewing a lot of items, mostly gifts, and I want to film the process. So, because I'm doing a lot of sewing videos, I decided that I want to talk about sewing machines to start. Um, threading, bobbin, stitches, tension issues, all those types of things. So I'm going to be making a couple of videos like this, just in case you have issues while you're sewing and you have something back to refer to. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get started. So I have you guys nice and zoomed in now and I'm first going to tell you about what my machine is. Um, it is a white brand sewing machine and it is model 1477. Um, it is quite an old machine, the base is metal. Um, all the other kind of features are mostly plastic, but it's kind of main base is metal, which is a great thing to look for in a sewing machine. Um, if you're going to buy a sewing machine, I would suggest getting an older machine. Find a used one um, that works, obviously. Get it serviced and go with that because most of the insides, like the gears and other parts, will be metal. Um, a lot of the newer machines are made of plastic and over time those gears break down. They basically turn into like dried pasta. That's kind of the consistency that the plastic turns to. And they end up breaking and those parts are next to impossible to repair. And if, they, if someone has a part from another machine, it's probably the same thing, which means it's also just as old and it's not going to last you a long time. So if you try and get an older machine, Again, most of the parts will be metal, so things will last you longer. So down the side here, it shows all the different stitches, which are the same as the ones on the dial. Now this dial on the front is how I change my stitches. There's a red dot at the top, which indicates which stitch I have selected. So here on the side, we've got our length dial. We've got our reverse button, or our back stitch. So I can change my length with this dial and press my reverse here. Now on my length at zero, there's a green line. This is where I put it to match up with my buttonhole setting. You can use a four for basting stitches and gathering, but I usually stick with a 2.5 or three. And the reverse I use when I start and stop sewing, um, it just holds your stitches in place. Now if I come up to the top of the machine here, I've got a handle so I can easily transfer my machine. This is quite a heavy one. And I've got two thread poles here. So the one I've got a little felt circle on here that just helps my thread spool kind of spin easier. Right here is my bobbin winder. It twists, it moves over to the side to activate it. And here is part of the threading feature for the bobbin and for the machine itself. So over to the side of my machine, we've got our wheel here. Now this, you always want to turn towards you. That's the natural motion that the machine turns. If you turn it backwards, you can get your thread knotted and all these other things can happen. So make sure you always try and turn this towards you. We've got our power cord and our pedal attachment here, which is removable. And I've got my light switch, which is on and off for the machine also. Now over to the left side of the machine, We've got this area, which is where we thread it, and mine actually has a little door here which opens, which gives you access to the light bulb and oiling if need be. Once we come down from our threading, we've got our foot and our needle, and below that we have a front-loading bobbin. And this table is removable here, and it has a little compartment here for storage. I don't use that storage because I have lots of things around me to keep my tools in, um, but that is there as an option. So with that being said, most machines are very similar in how they thread. Things may be in a different position on the machine, but for the most part the actual mechanics of it are the same. So your machine may be slightly different, but you should be able to figure out from this basic threading. So from the top, I'm going to put my top thread on first. So I'm going to apply, I have two different colors for my top and my bottom so we can differentiate where things are when I start sewing on a scrap. So I've got my thread. Now mine has a hook underneath, a hook on the side, and a little wheel on top. The wheel on top is for threading your bobbin, but for this machine to just thread the needle, we go underneath the hook, under the back, 
and I go around this hook on the side and come straight down. So I've got my thread here, my green thread if you can see that, and my tension dials are right in between these two discs. Now this dial is how we change the tension. Um, usually between a 3 and 4 is normal and I've got a little red dot here to indicate where my dial is at. This may be changed depending on the fabric that you're sewing, the thickness that you're putting through your machine. Um, sometimes it may need to be on a wacky setting like an 8 or 9 that's really tight um, just because of what you're sewing. You have to kind of test out your fabric and see how things go. But normally a 3 or 4 is pretty normal. So I'm going to go through the center of these two discs here and I'm going to go straight down. So once we are sitting through our tension discs here, this little piece has a hook underneath so we want to go down and around it and come back up. Now there's a little hook inside here and it's called our take-up lever. Now the normal position for your take-up lever is up so it's right at the top there. You can see it can move right at the top of your screen there. I'll get zoomed in in a second. But that hook, if you have it up, then you're less likely to unthread your machine um, when you start sewing. So just a little tip there. So it's a very important part to have this threaded or your machine will not be sewing at all. So we've got our thread that's from the bottom hook. And we're going to go around the right and over to the left and through our take-up lever like that. And then we're going to go back down. There's another hook and then we're going to go through our needle. So basically you're going from the thread to the tension discs, you're going down, you're coming back up, and you're going back down again. So going down to our needle, we've got a hook right here or a guide for our thread so it doesn't come out of our take up lever. And there's another hook right before your needle as well. There's usually one right above it. I usually take it like this and kind of hook it through. It's much easier. And your needle should be in with the hole facing towards you and you put your thread straight back. I'm not going to thread my needle yet because I want to show you how you insert and change your needle. Coming back here to our needle, we've got our little screwdriver on the side you can see there. So this here is what holds our needle in. So I'm going to unscrew that and pretend like my needle is not in the machine. You can usually do it with your hand, sometimes they need a screwdriver. So if you can see our needle here, it's kind of rounded on the front side and you can see there's um, some lines on there and that's an engravement of the number, the size of the needle and if I turn it over, it's flat on the back. So that's the side that goes towards the back of your machine. So those little numbers that are engraved on there. So on this needle it says 80 by 12. That's kind of your average size. And on the other end of the needle, we've got the front, which there's a groove that goes right down the front. And I can actually put my fingernail right down all the way to the hole. So that's how you can tell the front if you're also unsure based on the top of it. So on the back of your needle, there's a little indentation that's right here. And that's also another way to tell that that's the back of your needle. So I'm going to put this needle back in the machine. So sometimes I kind of tip it towards me like this so the tip of my needle isn't hitting any of the metal. And I'm going to put it straight up into the machine. And I'm going to twist this so that it's nice and tight holding it in. And I'm going to thread this now. Okay, so we've got our needle threaded. So for our foot, there's a lever right at the back here. Sometimes it's towards the side, um, but you can see the little handle right here. Mine just goes up towards the back. We've also got a screw on the side here that holds my foot on. So I'll remove this here just to show you. So my foot kind of has a two-piece part to it. So this little lever right here, if I press it, it actually releases the foot. So this part holds the foot on and this is the actual foot which I can interchange with other feet like zipper feet, buttonhole feet, um, invisible zipper feet, there's a bunch of different feet you can try. So basically once you have this attached to your machine, you use your lever at the back to go down and that little bar should hook inside this holder. Some machines have different 
feet features so you just have to kind of see what you're working with. So now that we've got our top threaded, um, I'm going to thread a bobbin and show you how to insert that. So since I've already got my needle threaded and I want to use a different color so that we can tell what's going on on my fabric scrap, I'm going to apply a different color thread to my other thread spool and I'm going to take this and wrap it around the dial on the other side. So I've got my dial here and this is to thread the bobbin. It puts some tension on the thread so your bobbin isn't wound all loose. So I'm going to take my thread that I want on my bobbin and I'm going to crisscross it over this dial. So I'm going to come from the front, wrap it around my dial, go towards the back, and come around like that. So we've got it crisscross. So now we're going to come back to the holder on the other side, which is right here. And I've got my empty bobbin. I'm going to take my thread and my bobbin. So I'm going to go from the inside of my bobbin and go up through one of the holes. Okay, so you can see the thread going up through one of the holes from the inside. I'm going to pull that tight from my dial on the other side, put it on my bobbin holder here, and push it over to the side. Now that will activate this to wind to thread my bobbin. So once you move this over, on most machines, that will deactivate the needle from going up and down. Now my machine is a little bit different. There's an inner wheel on the side um, of the outside wheel itself, and I have to turn that opposite direction of the wheel, and that will stop the needle from going up and down. Now my inner wheel on my machine is a little bit stuck, and so it's extremely hard to turn. So at the moment, until I get that loosened up and oiled, and I probably need to get my machine serviced. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and wind my bobbin, although the needle is going up and down. The bobbin um, casing area is empty, so it's not going to do any damage, it's just going to be loud. But for most machines, it does deactivate the needle from going up and down, which is normal. So when threading my bobbin, I'm going to grab the thread that I put through the top of one of the holes, and I'm going to hold it taunt while it winds and eventually it will break off from being spun around so many times. You can fill up your bobbin as much or as little as you'd like. There's usually a little piece here that stops it from getting too full but normally I don't go past the halfway mark if, of the holes if you have that type of bobbin. You don't want to fill it too too full because then it might just like come off. Push this back over and remove it from the top. So I'm going to take my bobbin and unwind it from my dial and it's still attached to my thread spool so I'm just going to come in and cut my thread. So we want to come back down to our bobbin area and mine's front loading so we're going to open this up. <laughs> it's a little bit dirty in there. But there's the bobbin holder in there and we've got our casing right here. Now this is the shape of my casing and this little lip here has to go inside that little spot there. It's made specifically for it. So I'm going to take my bobbin and in this kind of machine and casing we want our bobbin to be turning clockwise. So when I put it inside the casing like this and I pull on my thread, my bobbin should turn clockwise. Good. There's a little slit right there. We want our thread to go through that. And then we pull our thread down this way and it makes a little click noise through there. Now our bobbin is threaded inside our casing. So on the front side of our casing here, there's a little lever and that holds our bobbin inside our casing. It locks it in. So you want to hold that open with your thumb and put it inside the machine going this way. Got our casing here, got our lever, put it inside, and we close it like that. And there's our bobbin thread. Now we need to get this bobbin thread to the top. So to get our bobbin thread to the top, you're going to hang on to your needle thread. You're going to turn your reel towards you so that the needle 
does one full cycle, so it's going to go down and comes back up. If you're not sure which position it should be in, your take-up lever should go down and come back up also, so it should be in the top position. You're going to go down and come back up. Now, our needle thread just went around the casing, it looped around our bobbin thread, and if I pull on my needle thread, it's going to pull my bobbin thread to the top and make a little loop under the foot and I can take my snips, scissors, fingers, whatever I can fit under there and pull the loop out. But I'm going to do another close up of that so you can see. So as you can see here with our needle thread, there's a loop right in there. And that's our bobbin thread, so that's what we pulled up. So I'm just going to take my snips, hook it through the loop and pull it up. And now we've got both threads to the top and that's exactly what we want. So now I can shut this and put my table back on. So I've taken my threads, I've put them through the center of my foot and put them towards the back and that's how you want to start sewing. So that is how you thread a sewing machine. I showed you how to do your top thread and your bottom thread as well as how to wind a bobbin. So I hope that video was very helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next one, crafters. Bye!